stipend mm. was for me a blessing. It was not a salary. It was a blessing because that's what we were told. I mean, for us, I, I had to learn that earlier. Uh, you can become bitter and you can become frustrated if you're thinking that, yeah, we're getting this, but they're getting that. That's not the point. It's not your brand. It's also not your platform. Uh -huh. You're just given an opportunity to minister on a platform that you didn't create. I told you, my love, I am not to be able to do this. I am not going to be able to do this. I am not going to be able I have another exciting guest. Um, it's a pastor. This couch is blessed by pastors. Uh, a former member of Joya Celebration. Uh, I think most of us will know him about the hit make I press on. Pimbi Kolume, we win. Uh, we have other, none other than Pastor Patrick Duncan. Good to be here, man. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while. It's been a minute. Yes, it has. It has been. It has been. But we thank God he's kept us. Yeah, you are, you are, still, you are still alive. Uh, please answer here. Yeah. I can continue with uh, Everything. How, how has been everything going? Man, uh, it's, been, it's been amazing. Um, regardless of COVID, you know, lockdown. <laughs> You know, since 2020, it's like really just been, uh, that's been tough, but God has kept us. He's kept us through it all. I think we've come, we've come out of it more than conquerors. Through everything, through you, everything. You, are, you are still standing. I'm still standing. And you're still standing here because God has made the way. That's right, that's right. Uh, wh where, does, where does the journey start, Murut? Where does it begin, uh, the music journey? Okay. Let's, right. let's start there. Because Listen. Uh, you know, most of the Zelwana, ish, man, I was six years old. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, that will be the case for most of us, uh, you know, growing up in church. Uh, usually musicians will say from the age of 12. <laughs> And that's usually when we get to know... To be exposed to yeah, the music. Yeah, when we know or when we find out if we have the gift or not. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you are made alert to it or really just brought to the place where mm. you were able to know in church mm. and mm. Uh, started there and from then on you know it started growing and it's amazing how God has carried us through through everything yeah, uh, and yeah. uh, even today we are still you, are, you have been talking about how God has carried us through mm -hmm. all over the mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. and but for now I want us to to talk about the industry right i'm just gonna say the industry because right. some say it's a ministry and all okay. that yeah. but there are quite a lot of things which are happening behind the scenes mm. which will make one wonder is this really the ministry yeah ah, that's a good one that's a good one because yeah you find the industry which is the job side of the music that you produce and then there is the ministry in terms of the gospel which is carried by the musicality that you have mm -hmm. so um yeah the industry in itself is very challenging it's very competitive and uh, you know in the arts it's important for you to be uh, to remain fresh uh, with your gift in order for you to stay in the mainstream if i could call it that mm. um however god you know god's intention for you is to minister his word through mm. song mm. and you see when we think about music um you know music is like money music is amoral mm. money is amoral mm. you find moral immoral and then amoral um, mm. money is amoral it depends <laughs> it depends in whose hands it falls yeah it depends who's got the money you know if you are if you are um, a faithful person money is in good hands but if you are a drug dealer, money is in bad hands. It takes, it takes on the character. Money takes on the character of the person uh -huh. in whose hands it yeah. lands. Yeah. Music yeah. is exactly the same. Music is amoral. Music is neither moral nor immoral. It mm. is amoral. Um, I would like to commend all of those who heal through their music, who heal people's lives through their music. Uh, you know, because music can heal or it can kill. It only does two things. It mm. either heals or it kills. Mm. You know, somebody um, who wanted to commit suicide 
when they heard your song or listened to my song, mm. they would want to stop that and really just get to a place of wanting to live. Mm. So the person that sings or the person who ministers or the person who, 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 who uses the tool called music, mm. Mm. that determines whether the person would want to kill themselves or whether they would be healed. Yeah. So you determine which side you'd like to stand on. I would like to commend those who convey a life of healing to society and all over. Because that's what music does. So every industry, the industry is filled with, it's filled with you know, uh, life givers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then also mm -hmm. it's filled with life takers. You choose. You choose. So and for us, because we stand on the side of life, we minister the gospel using the platform or the uh, in or, or the tool called music music because mm. music is not a ministry music is a tool through which you do ministry mm. Mm. it's like a platter when you go to the to to, to the restaurant sure um you know the, the 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 cleanliness of the platter that the the waiter brings your food on means nothing the food is what's important so if your skill is sharpened as a musician it's just a beautiful, clean platter. Mm -hmm. The platter is not the food. The food. The platter carries the food. The food. <laughs> so the gospel is the food. Your musicality <laughs> and your instrumental ability is, is the platter. The See, so many times we major on the cleanliness and the quality of quality, the platter. Yeah, and we forget about the spirituality. The food. We forget the food. about the food. The food. The context, what's in the plate, is what counts. Yeah. <laughs> and Murut, like, most of the gospel artists, especially today, yeah. from your generation, right. they'll tell you, no, man, I'm, I've been depressed. The one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. And yet again, they have to be those who are talking about the gospel. Yeah. They have to be those who are preaching the gospel. That's right. That's right. What, what's, what seems to be going wrong with them? Uh, I think, I mean, all of us have a responsibility to maintain a fresh relationship uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, because we are ministers of the gospel does not mean that we are in a position where we are immune to being attacked of the enemy. Mm. In fact, the enemy attacks those who are the instruments of God. Mm. If mm. you are an instrument of peace, the devil will make sure that he frustrates you. Mm. So we are not immune to the attacks of life and the challenges of mm. life. Mm. The important thing is for us to remain fresh by connecting and reconnecting to God. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, because it's not just something we tell people. Yeah. The word of God is not just something we give to people. It's not just the uh, you know, food we give to people. Mm. We need to make mm. sure that as we are serving the food, that we also eat. But also, what, what you're talking about eating, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about joyous celebration yeah. in a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, people are being under, underpaid. Right. Uh, people are being exp exploited. Okay, I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because uh, it's 2022, right. you are... You are in a big brand, in a big stage. Uh -huh. Yet again, you get 2.5. Okay. How, how are we supposed to continue serving? Right. Okay. No, no, no. I love that. It's a good question, though. Very good question. I'm not intimidated by that. This is the point. Um, Joy Celebration, like any other platform, like Spirit Music or wherever you go, it is a platform. Mm. It's a platform. And uh, it's a platform that sets you up in so many different ways. There's many people who would, not, who would not have known about Patrick Duncan if I did <clears throat> not find myself on that Within platform. Within that stage. Yeah. So the platform in itself, the ministry joyous celebration itself, gives you a platform and exposes you to many audiences which otherwise you would not have been able to get. And now for me, I consider that the greatest amount of money. Yes, because sir. if you have to do it yourself, you, never, you may never get there. So apart from the fee that they paid me, I learned a long time ago, apart from, you know, that stipend that they gave, the stipend was for me a blessing. It was not a salary. It was a blessing because that's what we were told. I mean, for us, I, I had to learn that earlier. Uh, you can become bitter and you can become frustrated if you're thinking that, yeah, we're getting this, but they're getting that. That's not the point. It's not your brand. It's also not your platform. <laughs> You're just given an opportunity to minister on a platform that you didn't create. 
So if you want to weigh the amount of money that you get from there, it is really priceless because the platform you're given to minister to people that you did not get into that venue. That yes. marketing. That marketing that you never that did. Accommodation. Accommodation you the never paid for. Food you never <laughs> food you never paid for. So if this is how I saw it, and the people that were with me on Joyous, this is how we saw it. It was like, okay, okay, that's what it is. Okay, this is what's happening. Maybe that's the way it goes. But what am I getting for being on here? Mm. And if the guys could look at that, they'll revisit thinking that this is supposed to be better in terms of salary. No, no, no. The founders of Joyous Celebration. They founded the organization. Mm. They worked hard over many years. Yeah. Many years. The audiences that are there, if they got them there. So, kudos <laughs> to those guys. I think it is important for us to know uh, that when God opens up a door for you, that you should be grateful. Yeah, because I think uh, our time, uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the singers or the musicians, we tend to, should I say, complain a lot. Let me, for better leg of yeah. word, complain a lot about things which are happening, but then we don't yeah. see what, like, what's really happening and yeah. what yeah. are we doing on the other right. end. Yeah. I promise yeah. you, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's important. For me, the blessing of being on, uh, on that platform was amazing. I can go anywhere, any township, up in Africa even, you know, Zimbabwe, wherever they I go, people, people know me. But they would mm. not have known me if it was if it not was for the platform event. Joyous Celebration. So, think about it again. If you're thinking that the stipend or the amount that they give you per performance, mm. if you're thinking that that's bad, think again. Yeah. I think you should think again. <laughs> because they're actually giving you a whole lot more. More than you can just think of. Because, like, doing a production yeah. takes, like, Let me six, tell you, 600, check 700. it out. Check it out. It's expensive. And there's one thing that they taught us when we were on, uh, on that platform. Uh, beautiful lessons. The lessons we learned from Mtunze Namba, uh, you know, Linda Lanham Kize. For us, it was amazing because we went open-minded. We did not, uh, you know, I've been a, an artist before I joined Joyous Celebration. Mm. I've been already a developed artist mm. before I joined Joyous. Mm. Mm. So what happened was, when I went there, uh, because my goal was to expand my borders. And you know, minister to more people. Because I had to step down from my your brand, my, my brand, and join this brand. Many people would say, "You mean Patrick Duncan? You sing backing vocals for Jabu? You do backing from Tunzi? You did not. They did not understand why I did what I did, mm. but because I wanted to reach further. And these are guys that have laid platforms for years that they've worked hard for years. Why should I try and do it on my own when somebody can?" Help me get there. So I learned that, and they told us in, in, in Joy Celebration, this is the lesson. When you step out on stage to do your song, when the people clap hands, you should know Patrick Duncan. They're not clapping hands for, for you. you. They're clapping hands for Joy and Celebration. Because once you leave... Yeah. If you're going on your own, <laughs> and you try and get that audience together the first thing, uh, you will struggle to get them. And when they do come, they're not going to be as celebratory as they would be for joyous. It means that, yes, you got the platform. It means you've learned. But the thing is this, to get that name to be strong and to get you to be in the face of people uh, where they honor you and respect you on that level, it's going to take work. Mm. It does not come easy. It did not come easy for Mtunzi, Jabu, and Lendelani. It didn't come easy for them. Mm. So when they set the platform for you and I, it's important for us, look at it from the right perspective. Mm. Don't just think from a monetary perspective. I mean, I, you, you, you just come now the other day. No one knew you. You come the from your worship team. <laughs> you come from wherever. Now all of a sudden you are on a joyous platform. Now you are who? You have this you ego. Are, yeah, see, no, I think that's the most dangerous thing to do. You know, when we get to be exposed to great audiences that we never worked for, we can really be ungrateful and miss the mark. Mm. Mm. Miss the mark. We need to be careful. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I hope this works for somebody. I, I hope it goes down well, though. I, uh, there's this, there's this group. I uh, forgot the name of it. I think we're part of it. Uh, it was you guys were wearing like red and black. Red and black. Where was this? Uh, were you part of that group? 
she forgot the name mm-hmm. my phone is not with me now right, right. along the conversation i'll remember okay, that I'll, no I'll, I'll come back i'll come back to it but either way uh moving forward uh you have been ordained as a pastor yes. you are in uh, a church leader yes yes you how do you coexist you <laughs> being a musician and a pastor at the same time right right it's quite easy. It's quite easy. I think I've been strong in, you know, my musical gift over the years and I've been doing a whole lot in terms of getting myself out there musically and God has really just given me the 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 you know the grace to be able to minister on a musical platform but all along from day one uh, I always had a strong passion for the word of God. Mm. That that was it. What gave me the reason to sing was my desire for God and his word. Mm. Uh, you know, apart from my relationship to Jesus Christ, I have no reason to sing. Mm. So, um, being a pastor and being a singer musician, um, it's it it really for me. I start when I started pastoring my own church a few years ago. When I started pastoring my own church, um, I deliberately did not sing much because I did not want the people to think that they are coming to a concert. Oh. My desire is to teach people the word which I really love. I love the word of God. And uh, it's important that that when people come to the house of God, they don't come to a concert. Mm. We can do music and we can set the platform for people to worship God which is good. Mm. But you need to understand you know the word of God and have a desire for prayer and a desire for his word in order for you to effectively minister on his behalf. You cannot minister on behalf of God if mm. you never minister to God. Mm. Mm. So for me, that's how it was. That, and that's how it is. I think it's primary. Whereas in my church, the goal is you need to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And mm. My strongest, my, my strongest uh, uh, you know, where I'm really strong in is in teaching the word. Mm. And that's me. I love the word. And uh, that's where you are focusing on even yeah. today. Even today. <clears throat> See, I mean, the music that I do is so word based because I cannot afford to give people my opinion. Uh, people don't want me. People want I mean, you, the people, God I People can. want my truth. It's all yeah. about my truth. Yes, they days. want the truth, Jesus Christ. You know, they want him. And uh, he will set us up in ways. The Bible says your gift will make room for you mm. and place you before great men. And that's what our gift does. It puts you in the presence of people. So uh, your character and the word of God carries you where your gift brought you. Mm. So if your gift exposes you and puts you in the presence of great people, you better have some content to give them. Yes, sir. You know, so that they yes, can sir. connect to God and then to themselves and then also know why they are on the planet. Uh, you spoke uh, about the, your type of music, mm-hmm. your sound. Yeah. Uh, is, it, is it selling? That's a nice one, because we chatted a little bit about that <laughs> on Twitter the other day. Uh, I, this, this is what it is, uh, because remember, uh, living in South Africa and being South African, um, we, this, our sound is different, and we're also vast, a whole lot of different people, different mm. uh, you know, ethnicities and so on in, in South Africa. There are many people who need to hear the word of God. Mm. And uh, there are certain people, some people love R&B, others love hip-hop, mm. others love, uh, you know, your normal maverick city, you know, international music. Because everybody's got their own taste. Sure. Um, genres are not holy. Genres are not holy. Uh, it's important to understand. It. Genres are not holy. Genres really ministers to what you used to. Like if you were born in Jamaica, you're not going to naturally like R&B. And if you don't like, if, if you don't <laughs> like R&B, that, it does not mean that you are unsafe. Like Jimmy Swaggart years ago believed that his form of music was the, was only, the gospel. only gospel. Yeah. No, it's country. It's, con- it's, a, it's a genre. It's what he grew up with mm. Mm. In, in, in Dallas or in, in Texas. It's what he grew up with. So the sound around you will become the sound that you become accustomed to. But this is what I want to say about it. The sound that you have, there are people who love that sound and you need to find those people. You may not sell as, ma- as many records or, or you know, albums as those who minister the most popular genre. Because in our country, you have the most popular genre, African you know, gospel, gospel kind yeah, of music. Traditional. If you, traditional gospel, if you go <clears throat> that route, you reach more people. 
right? Not necessarily more people. Let's look at it like numbers. That. You reach numbers, but it may not be the numbers that God has called for you to minister. I, I, I was I was about to say that the numbers mm-hmm. uh, matches with the souls. You see, right, listen. <laughs> it's very important for us to get this. I think uh, many times, even with social media, uh, if you have about forty thousand followers. Some people have one million followers. <laughs> the amount of followers does not indicate your, the does not indicate whether you are, uh, whether you are doing the right thing or not. Mm, mm. The amount of followers does not indicate that you are a powerful person. Mm. The amount of followers does not even indicate that you are led by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Satan left heaven with a third of the angels to hell. Mm. He left heaven. With a third of the angels. And he was on his way to hell. So the amount of your following does not mean that you are spirit filled. Yes sir. Yes sir. So the amount of sales that you make, it does not mean that you are seeing the right thing. So basically it, it also goes back to the character, whether you are in this for yeah. making sales. You understand? Or you are pushing. You can it's easy to make sales if you sing what the people want you to sing. Yeah. But now the other thing also. There are people, there are guys, there are, you know, there are people who make a lot of money and sing the right thing. Mm. Those who preach the gospel purely, mm. those who sing like Pastor Benjamin Duben, and, you know, those guys, and the on Bambo, they do good and they're doing well, and their word and their gospel that they're singing is the truth. Mm. You understand? The genre, and because of the genre that they minister to, and also the platform and the grace God has given them. Is what is the favor upon their life. So you don't have anything negative to say about that. There's nothing negative to say. But I'm saying in terms of if you if God has called you to the numbers, praise God. But if He's called you to a few people that you need to minister to that will only listen to a certain genre, then that's what you need to do. But as a musician, you need to be broad. You must be able to sing your traditional and all the others so that you are able to also love off your gift. Mm. So there's that. You need to be wise as to how you're going to be doing it. You don't just sing one genre. If your goal is to reach everybody, you're going to have to be flexible. Like the Apostle Paul says, I become all things to all men. That's it. So that I can reach many. <laughs> you want to reach many? Then you need to become all things to all men. Sometimes we become so rigid and one-track minded that you find yourself in a conundrum where you don't know, <laughs> hey, what am I going to do? I need to pay the bills at the end of the month. But, you know, my CDs are not selling. My music's not selling. Are you broad enough? Mm. So you cannot judge the audience and you cannot judge the industry. Have you done everything possible that you know you can do? Mm. You see, sometimes we complain and we say a whole lot of things about the industry. This Why are other people doing well and you're not doing well? Mm. We need to find out what are they doing that you are not doing. What are they doing? What, what are they sacrificing? What are they giving? What are they, you know, how much time do they spend with, you know, with their craft? Because I think that's another thing we tend to neglect our craft. Once a Pindu Kuluma makes it, yes, we just want to focus there. Yeah, yeah, you stay there. <laughs> but also people want to keep you there. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes people keep you on I press there because that's how they know you. Pindu Kuluma, that's how they know you. They, they want you. you. They, they box, box you. you. They want you to just be that. No, just be. No, man. Just give us a chance to be who we are supposed to be and you know sometimes because they know us through those songs the thing is that's, um, I mean, that's our best the, the thing is once you you get a hit song yep. from joyous you're mm. from joyous people will just oh that's his song right we just oh that's his song so mm. you're just gonna box him like yeah that. once you come with the contemporary music oh, but then, what is he doing what is he doing this guy's guy. messing up <laughs> the thing is this you cannot you cannot fault him on that that I think it is important to, okay, no, you need to be well-rounded as a minister. Mm. So even, I mean, on every album, this is what I've learned a long time ago, on every album, then you must have a song that is more or less like the Pindu yeah, Kuluma, yeah. or more or less like the I Press, so that you're able to, and you market yourself. I think that's when you start branding, you know, okay, this is the vibe, this is where I am. But sometimes those songs are contrary to what you actually like, but then again, are you only singing what you like singing or are you singing what would minister to people? So in, in, when you are doing your songs, do you just get the, the rhythm or the song just drops through? Mm. 
or there's just a sit normal. I need to start writing songs and all that. No, I don't sit down. I don't have the privilege like everybody else. You know, some musicians are brilliant that way where they are able to write music at will. Mm. You know, they would write at will what they would like to write about. They'll get a theme and they'll write about it. I can write <clears throat> according to a certain theme. Mostly what I prefer doing is when that song drops in my spirit. Mm. I'll get the lyrics, I'll get the melody, mostly I get, I, I, I mostly get both mm. at the same mm. time. So now I wake up and I'll record it on my phone and then I work it out afterwards on my guitar, mm. you know, then I, that's what I do. Uh, that's how I get my songs. I yeah. usually love that process <laughs> because it's very original. Because if it's something that I want to think out, it's going to be a co along the lines of what I've already written. Mm. If it is something that just drops in my spirit, it goes into a direction. Uh, you know, is that, I, that, yeah, that I've never experienced before, which is an awesome place. Uh, I'm asking this in terms of because uh, you have been off the mainstream yeah. media. Yeah. So we just want to know what you have been busy yeah. with. Yeah. What, why are you hiding? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I think, I think it, like, I, like I said before, it takes a lot of work. Uh, it takes a lot of work to be out there. And if you're not prepared to do the work, you cannot say that it's the Lord that didn't give you breakthroughs. God gave us platforms. Mm. It's important for you to put in the work. Mm. So what I've been doing, because my focus has been church all along, I'm establishing my church and building on my ministry and, you know, building my people. Uh, there's a lot of things. My approach would be different in terms of my music now. Because um, it's not only me, it's my congregation as well. So when people come to your church, they need to get an experience of Patrick Duncan, not the, the, the pastor, Patrick. and then also yeah. the ah. music. So I'm still building on that. With regards to my music, I've, I've written a few singles. Uh, mm. Yeah, I wrote a song called It'll Be Okay. That was during uh, COVID. Oh, COVID yeah. It'll Be Okay. Things won't always be this way. I know that you're going through some hard uh, times. But things will be, it'll be okay. Mm. Uh, you know, whenever you would, enc would encourage somebody, it's like, you know, you, 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 you run out of words sometimes. And then the only thing that, that sticks is, it'll be okay. Yeah. It was that, and then I wrote another song called, You Surround Me. Yes. Even yes, during yes. this time of COVID, You Surround you Me, surround God me. Surrounds Us. And that song really mm. comes from the book of Kings, where Elisha and his servant found themselves you know, surrounded by, by the enemy. Them, yeah. And the, enemy, the, the servant came out and said, okay, master, listen, this is it, we're surrounded. And Elisha came out and, said, and prayed for him and said, master, touch this boy, open his eyes, let him see that they that are for us are more than they that are against us. So your them. enemy is even surrounded by God. So that's where that song came mm, from. Mm. Then another one that I wrote is, uh, Yahweh is always. always. Yahweh is always. That, that was inspired by the name Yahweh. Uh, they say that the name Yahweh is really breathing. breathing. <sighs> Yahweh. <sighs> so they, that's where it comes from. You can, you can say the name of Jesus without closing your mouth. This, the name of God without closing your mouth. Mm. So Yahweh, the Bible says, they that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. So those, they that come to him must believe that he is. So yes, Yahweh sir. is always. Yes, sir. So, the the, the, the the chorus goes, Yahweh is always. always, he has always been who he is and will always be mm -hmm. just the same. So the depth of my writing, it started increasing in terms of, especially during this time, when we were focusing on letting people understand that God never left and God is always with us regardless of the sifting process mm. of COVID. Mm. That was that. And uh, you were not, not affected by the COVID because... Uh, churches, uh, Christianity mm. were under attack. Yes, definitely. Where, where are the churches? They are not yeah. praying. Right. Let them pray this thing away. Yeah. Yeah. As a pastor, what was going through Man. your mind? Listen, it, it's, it's been, it's, we, we faced a lot of challenges during COVID. When it is left, there was a lot of things yeah. that happened there. Because COVID in itself was a sifting. I believe God is still sifting the body of Christ. If you didn't know your stance in God, COVID could have sifted you uh, and, and you, you would have fallen through the cracks. Mm. But if you knew who you were in Christ, it exposed you to the fact that you really know who God is. Mm. That's one. Uh, so people left churches and all of those kind of things happened. But this is one thing that I have experienced during COVID. When we just heard the announcement, the Lord gave me a strategy throughout COVID. Mm. Uh, and although many of us, you know, got the virus, many of us got COVID, not one of my congregation died. Mm. I didn't lose 
one member to God. Mm. Because of the strategy God has given us, a strategy of prayer and really just, really just speaking faith in the lives of the people, regardless of what the announcement was, regardless of what came on to social media, I ministered yeah. and preached every day, the whole day I would speak to my congregation. And we never lost one member to COVID. That's the grace God gave us. So regardless of the, the amounts and the numbers and all of those kind of things, because of the shaking, mm. because it wasn't necessarily negative, it was God allowed, God did not send COVID, but God allowed for it to come because I believe that we're living in the end times and things are busy closing down. If Christians are not aware of that, then I'm beginning to worry. This if you're not aware, times. There's an end, we're living in the end times. We're living in the last days, the last of the last days. And God is bringing about a distinction between Christians and the unsaved. Mm. What COVID brought, you can, people can say, where was the church? This way, that's, no, no, no. God was never moved through COVID. God never left. Because like, that's another thing where we can say, uh, where was God yeah. throughout the, yeah. the COVID thing? Yeah. Where is the your God? Yeah. Why can't he, why yeah. can't they just pray this thing over? Yeah, no, they can't say that if they think that God is Father Christmas. God is not Father Christmas. God is not moved by circumstances. God is not moved by COVID. He was not moved. Christians were moved because we were not stable. Christians would move from Christian faith to Islam to atheism to agnosticism right now where we are because of COVID. Many Christians whom we thought were Christians all along switched from Christianity with a whole lot of excuses to atheism, uh, 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 being an atheist. Mm. Many Christians switched from Christianity to Buddhism. Many Christians whom you have known as Christians over the years, who you <laughs> thought they were Christians. But when COVID stepped in, it shook them. Because we have an idea of God, that God will do what we want him to do. We'll think God will move when we say he must move. No. Sometimes God will allow you. He will allow you to feel embarrassed. Because now you're thinking that you are in competition to Islam. You're thinking that we are in competition to Buddhism. No, God is not, is not a competition. God does not have anybody equal to him. Mm. God does not need to <clears throat> prove whether he's God or not. Mm. God is God. Whether you believe him or not. or not. Jesus is Lord. You don't make him Lord. You agree that he is Lord. But you don't make him Lord. If you disagree that Jesus is Lord, it still does not put him in a position where he is not Lord. Whether you agree or not. Whether you agree or not. Believe it or not. God's existence is not on the basis of your admittance. Whether you admit he's God, whether you admit he's, he exists, does not make him less God. Oh, more God. He is God. And as soon as people realize that there's one Lord, there's one God, that's the soonest we'll get to the place of really being saved and born again. And most Christians were shaken through COVID and lost their salvation. My advice and my encouragement is find God. Get to the place where you know God. The, and this is it. You find out that even if, if COVID shook you away from God, my question is, were you ever with God? Mm. That's what I say. Yeah, man. We 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 have received or we have, we have been <clears throat> blessed by Pe Pastor Patrick Duncan, not Patrick Duncan the musician. <laughs> uh, I think it's it's one and the same person, one and the same person. I think the impact, you know, my my zeal and my excitement for singing the gospel of Jesus Christ is exactly as my zeal and excitement for preaching it. Because, the, you know, the intensity, I usually say to people, my musical gift really is just an excuse to preach. You mm. know, it opens up a door so that I could preach the gospel. You know, Muruti, we, we have this... How can I put this, man? Our generation, like... Uh, I think we just have few who are living a Christ-like life, especially in the industry. Yep. Man, it's important for us to know that we know that we know that that is true because we can, we can think about it, we can say it or maybe their lives on social media gives the impression that they're not saved. It's important to know, you know, it's important to be sure about yeah. what we're speaking about. Mm. You know, um, 
because, uh, like I say, anybody can sing gospel. You can be somebody that's not born again, or you can be somebody that's born again. Gospel music is a genre. This Snoop Dogg had a gospel album. Mm. Snoop Kanye Dogg. West. Kanye West had a gospel album, and everybody was, you know, Kanye is really safe. Kanye, is, you know, all that nonsense that happened on social media. <laughs> we tried to prove and Although for us who really studied the history of Kanye West, we know how the guy's mind works in terms of life. <laughs> Kanye West is a major businessman. He is 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 crafty. That's who he is, and I'm not going to say much about that because. You know, when things flashed out and when things didn't work out, it's like we've known. I did not go on to, you know, because everybody can sing gospel music. Everybody can, can decide. Write. They can write gospel music. They can do whatever they want to. But the point is this. If you are really a Christian, you'll know if that is from the word or if it is the Lord. Because being a gospel minister is not the same as being able to do gospel music. Mm. You can sing gospel music, but it does not mean that you are a gospel minister. Mm. Mm. How do I know you're a gospel minister? You must be born again. You must, you, you, you know, you must be led of the spirit of God in order to minister the gospel. Let me let me say it like this. So, listen. If 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 I don't if I don't have if I don't know you, Neil. Mm. If I've never met you before, right? And, and I meet someone along the road and they ask me about Neil. Mm. Because I'm a person of God. I love Jesus. I will talk good about Neil. If I say, Neil, such a guy, you know, man of God, child of God. Remember, I don't know you personally. Yeah. Right. So, because I speak good about you, right, it's good. But the good that I speak about you, mm. if it is not on the basis of my relationship to you, mm -hmm. Then I'm lying. Because I don't know you. The weight that will be behind me speaking about you is on the basis of me knowing you. Knowing you, the relationship. So people can say God is good, you can say Jesus is Lord, you can... Do you really know him? You, is he Lord of your life? So the anointing backs up the relationship. Mm. So you can say Jesus is good if you don't know him. Yeah. You can say, you know, there is a God and write songs and, you know, minister the gospel, you know, without knowing Jesus. People can be saved even through that. Yeah. But the important thing is this. You know for a fact that you don't really know God. Mm. You know it. I can't judge you, but you know it. That you don't know God. So you can prophesy and you can speak about the goodness of the Lord. But the goodness of the Lord, if it has not meant anything to you, if it's not personal to you, then your praise has no weight. Praise has weight because of relationship. I can't praise you effectively yeah. without knowing you yeah. personally. Yeah, yeah. One last question. <laughs> One last question. Is God only good when things are going according to the way we want them? <laughs> A beautiful question. I love it. I love it. No. Uh, God, God's Character is goodness. Because Murut, like if you think about it, we are always saying God is good. We mm. are praying and all that. But then our life as Christians, like we are we are stuck in one right. place. There's right. no growth, there's nothing. Mm. But then our spirituality is there. But then if someone see but dude, we are praying and all that. Yeah. yeah. But you don't even have a job and yep. you're still saying Right. Yeah. Right. You see, our progress in life is you see, there's what you're supposed to do, and then there's what God is supposed to do. Mm. Um, there is um, what you call, um, not necessarily the works of man, it is the efforts of man. It is, there's, there's a responsibility that you have as a person to be a success. Mm. And then there's a responsibility, you know, that God has to open up doors for your success. Let me make an example. You see, we have the natural, and then we have the supernatural. Mm. Yeah. We have... We have the, uh, 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 the doable and then you have the something that you can't do. The Bible says, you know, I, I spoke a word on Sunday with regards to this because it's important. Sometimes we haven't done everything possible. The Bible speaks about the woman with the issue of, the, yes, uh, of blood. The, blood. the Bible speaks about the fact that for 12 years she went to doctors, she did this, she tried that, she tried that. And then she came to the end and realized, I've, wasted, I've, I've used up all, all my options. money. Meaning all that 
I have done everything in my power. I could do. Now it is up to God to do what he can do. I've done what I could do. And then there's what God must do. The guy at the pool of Bethesda, when Jesus came to him and said, what do you want me to do? Do you want to be whole? And then he said, every time I want to go in, every time I try and go in, somebody mm. goes before me. Mm. So he tried something in the natural. Mm. What are you trying in the natural? See, the thing is this with us. There's certain things we say the Lord is not opening up doors. When you're struggling to wake up in the morning to go and apply for, an, uh, for a job, Mm. You're struggling to be, you're not diligent enough. You're not doing what you're supposed to do in the natural. This is the question. Have you done everything humanly mm -hmm. possible so that God could do the Dead. impossible? <laughs> See? Yes, sir. And, yes, and that's sir. what's important. Yes, many times we'll say God is good. But we say God is good because many, much of our praise is not really praising God. Let me explain this. Much of our praise is really trying to encourage God. To do. To do. It's like we are trying to, we're trying to, to encourage bribe him. him. Yeah, we're trying to bribe him. We're yeah. trying to, you know, it's like a, like your son, your son or your daughter would come, say, Daddy, I love you, you know I love you, and you know you're such a good daddy. And then what did you say? What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> so the praise that came to daddy was not true. Mm. It was because you wanted something from daddy. Mm. So when we say, Lord, you are good, remember God knows those things. If you say, Lord, you are wonderful, he knows that. If you say, Lord, you are powerful, he knows that. If you are saying it with the intention of getting to twist his arm to do what you are supposed to do, he's not going to do it. Mm. Mm. You see, wealth, important. Financial, financial growth. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Yeah, leave the breakthrough nonsense. Leave the breakthrough nonsense. Let's quickly, we call it breakthrough. Remember? Oh, Lord, have mercy on the church because these things are messing us up. It messes us up. Yes, I believe in breakthroughs, but this is the point. This is what I'm saying. You see, you need to do... You made me lose my train. <laughs> we need to do what is humanly possible. Oh, yeah. And then say, Lord, I have done everything in my mind. Step over. And then there will be what we call a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. This is it. If we think that blessing has to do with money, if we think blessing has to do with money, money why are stuff. the Satanists, the atheists, why are all the unsaved doing better than us mm. financially? Mm. Why is the world doing better than us if blessing is money? Why are your friends that's Muslim doing better than you? Yes, sir. Why are the unsaved doing <clears throat> if blessing is money? No, blessing is not money. Not at all. Money. The, abil the ability to acquire wealth has not been reserved for Christians. Mm, yes, sir. It's for every human being, whether you're born again or not. The people out there in the world, they work hard. Beyonce rehearses 16 hours a day. You pray 16 hours a day and expect your gift to be sharp after prayer. It does not mean that you should not pray. But it means many times we pray more than what we work. Yes, sir. The problem with Christians is that we expect a miracle when we did not perform the miracle that we have been created to be. God created you and me as a miracle to this world. Mm. But we're waiting on God for miracles mm. to happen. When you have not yet been a miracle to somebody, mm. your birth, your life, everything about you on the planet, you've been designed to be a miracle, but you're still praying for miracles. So, the breakthroughs, I believe in that. I believe God can do that because that's what miracles are. Miracles, you know, the Lord will perform a miracle when you have done everything that you could or if you could not do it on your own, the Lord God will perform something for you. And I believe in the supernatural. Mm -hmm. I believe that God can do these things. But the problem with Christianity is we have more people praying than people working. Yes, sir. Intercession will help you to work well. Mm -hmm. Intercession does not take the <clears throat> work ethic away. Grace is for opportunities to work. Mm. Grace does not re remove work. Mm -hmm. Grace puts you in a position to work. work. Having yes, an understanding who you are, who your God is, and what your purpose is on the planet. That is the purpose of grace on the planet. Mm. It's, it does not replace work. For the Christians today, who by the grace of God, like you're useless. Like you don't know nothing. You don't have a gift. You don't have a talent. You never apply your gift. You never apply your talent. 
You waiting for somebody, some prophet to prophesy over your life so that things can happen like you are useless. That's why the world out there, if we're talking blessing, they're thinking, okay, let me listen to this Christian. Now you're talking blessing, you're talking cars, houses. Now this I businessman comes, he's got all of these things. So if Christianity has yes, you, you, to do with me getting these things, then I don't need Christianity yeah. because I have it without Christianity. Mm, mm, mm. So what are you giving them? You, you're supposed to give them. That's why when you speak and say God is good, even when I'm struggling financially, God is good. It's not because it's not. You say God is good because that's his essence. He is goodness. But the point is this. God is good. His goodness leads us to repentance from laziness. Mm. His goodness leads us from a place of weakness to a place of strength. Mm. Mm. So that's what the goodness of the Lord is. And you know we can go. Uh, I don't want to say your opinion <laughs> because we are going to yeah. wrap this thing up. Mm. What does the word say about tithe? I don't want to ask about Woo! <laughs> Woo! Now you got me. Now. now you got me. Now you got me. Now, now you got me. Now, now you got me. Yeah. This, 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 is, this is my belief. Yeah. The word is plain about tithing. Mm. There's what the Old Testament speaks about tithing. There's what the New Testament speaks about tithing. We need to understand also generous giving according to the, the New Testament. We know that. Yeah. My point is not that. I'm going to mention something that I know is, is, is trending at the moment. It's mm. trending all over the world right now. Mm. Our brother and pastor Creflo Dollar ministered that word and he came and repented. And, you know, and I don't have anything against him as a person because he's a beautiful man of God. And I'm mm. a problem. Mm. My point is this, and I'm going to say it like this. There's a lot to say about it, and mm. I think that's a discussion for another time. Mm. But this is what I would like to say. The problem mm. that I have with Christians, we look into the Word of God to get loopholes. Christians <sighs> love the Word of God for loopholes, not to obey it. We're not interested in applying the Word. Where can I get a lotto number from the word. Mm. Where can I get magic from the word? So the minute somebody comes up with something that seems to give you a, an opportunity to excuse yourself from your responsibility. I love what Dr. Miles Monroe said years ago. He says, tithing is like kingdom taxes. Mm. Kingdom taxes does not give you a blessing. It just makes you, uh, taxes. He speaks about taxes. He says, taxes does not, is, is, it does not make you get the over and the above. It makes sure that your lights are on, mm -hmm. your roads are tarred, mm -hmm. taxes, kingdom, you know, taxes in your country as a citizen, uh, yeah. it makes sure your roads are tarred, make sure, because that's the purpose of the taxes. Mm. So tithing is like kingdom taxes so that the poor can be taken care of. The, you know, those that need education, you know, they, they can be funded that, so that there is money and food in the mm -hmm. storehouse. Yeah. You can all New Testament it and go and judge it and say whatever you want to. But from a Christian responsibility, you know that you need to do what you're supposed to be doing so that there is food in the stores. And I'm not talking and referring to, yeah, you'll say those pastor eats the money or that bishop eats the money. I understand those things happen, but let's not use those things as an excuse to not do what we are supposed to be doing. <laughs> That's so simple and... Uh, I just wanted to what the word says, yeah, not yeah. what Peter Duncan no. thinks. Yeah. Because the thing is, we tend to... We know what the word says. Yeah. And it can be broad. But we don't go into the word of God to argue. Mm. I don't ever, and even on my social media pages and platforms, I don't go on there to argue. I don't go on there. If you want to hear more about me, you come to my church and we can sit down. I have discipleship classes on Wednesday night mm. at 7 p.m. Mm. And I have church on Sundays at 9 a.m. Mm. I teach the word. And I teach it systematically. Because we are a complex being. For where you'd like to go, you are a complex being. You cannot get there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while, so you need to go through the word and study scripture systematically without looking for excuses to not be a Christian. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, before we just close it off, I uh, just want to speak to a young musician. Yeah who says, I want to try this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, a young singer who says, I want to break through in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Just a word of advice. Uh, I believe you have seen what's happening in the industry. You have been, in the, you are still in the industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My thing to anyone out there, should I? 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's your screen over here. <laughs> this is it. I think it is quite simple and you've heard it, it does not just come from you desiring to play instruments or sing. The gift that God gives you in terms of music is a beautiful gift. The important thing is this, if you're just interested in using your gift to make money, there's a whole lot of genres, a whole lot of things you could do to make money. That's, I'm not discussing that. I'm speaking about your purpose, understanding who you are and why you are. So God gives you this gift of music. It gives you the gift of playing an instrument with the intention of spreading his word throughout the world. That's the idea. And how does that happen? Firstly, it happened like that to all of us. And the sad thing is this, most of us started in church, but then we got to the place of leaving church and using a whole lot of excuses. Yes, people hurt you, but people hurt you anyway, not just in church. So uh, people say, I left the church, So, which means, can I just say this, it's important. So which means if your family hurts you, now you, you change your surname. Mm. Because your mm. mother hurt you, now you change your surname. No, you don't change your surname because somebody hurt you, you'll get hurt. Life is like that. You get hurt. You get hurt at church. Many times people only mention I got hurt at church. church. You don't mention the fact that you get hurt at work. You get hurt at school. Only when it comes to church, then it is a big problem. Back to simple again. All I'm trying to say is this. So you need to know that when you start out, you need to serve in your local church. In your local church, that's where most of us, many of the musicians that you see great out there, the church was the platform. The church was the training place for the marketplace. The church is the training place for the marketplace. I'll say it again. It's important for you to know. So this is where most of us started. Because the church gives you platform to, to minister to God and then you start knowing who you are. Get involved in the worship team. Get involved in the praise team so that you could develop there because the church is the great platform that helps you to deal with an audience. That helps you know how to speak to audiences. Start at church. Work at church. Never leave church, by the way, because you don't grow to a place where you leave your family. It will become difficult for you to function there because sometimes the people's mentality in church is not on that class like you started out there. Most of us, we started out in church. Now all of a sudden you can't handle, yeah, the people in church can't sing, the band can't play, these guys. The sound is oh, horrible. The sound is horrible. Oh, you grew through all of that. You were there. You were nothing. You started out there and you were powerful and you grew there. So now you're becoming a problem. No, the idea is really just for you to go back to go and serve and help there. This is what I'm saying to the person out there. So you start out in church. You work hard. You do it not for the sake of just doing music. Yes, you want to be exposed in the industry. Very important. God does not expose you. God unveils you. Because exposure has to do with anything negative. Mm. God unveils you. So what happens is, because if you chase for exposure, people will not only talk about what you do right, they'll also talk about what you do wrong. So you need to have the character to be able to handle that. So God will unveil you at the right time. Whoever must see you, whoever must sign you on, and whatever you need to do with your music, the Lord will show you as you grow. He shows you as you grow. There's many things I'm saying right here, but I want to encourage you. I want to say to you that it is possible for you to be the best of the best. The most important goal should be to know the Lord. So serve in the house, grow in the house, and the Lord God will send you on your way as to where you need to go, but you should never forget where you come from because where you come from uh, is not necessarily a bad place. I'm referring to the church, the house of God. You need to have a pastor over you. You need to have oversight that you remain forever. You never grow away from that. If things happened and it was bad at church, things, people hurt you, it does not mean now you don't need a family and you can run solo. You're going to get hurt. So, the encouragement is you want to start this thing. Start right. You need to know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. The foundation must be right. You need to have a desire for the Word so that you sing the Word. Because not all songs out there are gospel songs. Some songs are feel-good songs and there's nothing wrong with a feel-good song. As long as we know the difference. Okay? Yeah, that's basically it. I can say many things. I think we'll come back here again. And just, but may the Lord bless you as you uh, prepare yourself for where God wants to take you to. That's basically it. Yeah, Moro, that was good. I need to visit your church. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Please do. I need, to, I need to visit your church. But then, 
it 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 will be it will be bad if you don't be a Pindu Kolume. <laughs> <coughs> Can I still sing? <laughs> oh Lord Jesus. Woo! Jesus. Alright. Pindu Kolume Moya Oingwele. Pindu Kolume Kosiam. Pindu Kolume Tiko Dimamele. Pindu kulume ngosiyam ngorazonki zono emengi zenza namshazi zoba ebusweni bako pindu kulume moyo ingele pindu kulume ngosiyam yo. Guys, I did not pay for that, so. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but uh, thank yeah. you, Muruta. I was. I think you were here to talk to me, not to them. <laughs> Personally. Amen. From uh, like, yeah. Oh, you were talking to me. You were talking to me. Amen. And yes, uh, yeah, I'm, I've, I've taken a lot of things. I'm like, okay. I'm still going to watch this over and over again. Amen. This is one of those where you just watch them because of the depth of the content that they. Uh, maybe I'm being biased. <laughs> 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 Nonetheless, uh, right, so this was a great episode. I believe you, and you, you will enjoy it and you'll take some notes and relax and just visit your your spiritual life again and we get or like okay they have had me go church let me go back again. But nonetheless, uh, the South African a self-appointed ambassador of gospel. Okay, I'll see you next time on the next episode.